Hi again then guys and welcome to the 67th installment of Days Gone By, the review series predominantly for the classic cars of Gran Turismo with some vintage models thrown in there as well. Gran Turismo doesn't have a massive amount of vintage cars to go with, but depending on your definition of vintage, because it does vary sometimes, you could consider this to be kind of a vintage car. Personally, I refer to vintage cars as pretty much anything before 1950. That's not necessarily everyone's opinion of vintage. That may not even be the official term of vintage or the official definition, but that's what I mean when I say vintage car. And once you get before, say, 1920, then you're talking antique. Now, this car falls very late in the vintage game, 1949, so it barely barely falls under that category for me, and it is a car which almost slipped between the cracks, because I thought that I'd already reviewed this car. I didn't specifically remember reviewing it, but I thought I probably had. But then I checked through the episodes of this series, and yes, I had reviewed a Beetle before, but it was the newer one. It's still a classic, but it is a much, much newer car. It's multiple decades newer, it's more expensive, it's a premium, and it is the more obvious choice. It's a very popular one. That car is a great collector's piece. It's a relatively affordable one. It's a bit expensive what it is, but still, it's not ridiculous. But we haven't reviewed this one. And unlike some vehicles on Gran Turismo where there's no real need to buy both premium and non-premium, and there are some cars like that, with this one it's a bit different. Because when it comes to these Beetles, they are two totally different cars. Even the way they look is considerably different, not just because one's a premium and one isn't, but the shape of the car is different. The rear window is a very noticeable difference for this particular Beetle. It's got that split rear window instead of the one piece that the Beetles which came after it had. Personally, I actually really like the look of this version. And although it's unfortunate that it's not a premium, I think I actually prefer this car of the two. The newer one is definitely better quality in terms of the graphics, the interior, the tuning options, but I prefer this car purely from the collector's point of view. Now, what do you actually get from this version of the Beetle? Because for those who maybe don't have massive funds, but want to still collect classics, for instance, is there really any need to buy both versions? Well, consider what you get from this car. First of all, the price is lower, around 20 grand lower at 40,000 credits. That is immediately notable, especially for people who want to maybe dip their toe into the classic car collecting market on Gran Turismo, but don't necessarily have ridiculous amounts of credits flying around to waste on a car which isn't that good. And for that 40,000 credits, you get a 1.1 litre rear-mounted turbochargeable engine, which also, of course, drives those rear wheels. Now, fully tuned, you're not too surprisingly putting out less spec than the newer car, but it's not without its merits. This car is lighter. It weighs only 640 kilos. And when you combine that weight, which is pretty good, with 135 horsepower, peak, and an even more impressive 199 pound-feet of torque. And it's actually not a bad overall package, especially for a car of its age. It has very few natural rivals on the game if you're talking about it from an age point of view. Most of this car's rivals tend to be at least a couple of decades newer, even if you're comparing it to its direct rival, the newer Beetle. Now, because of the fact that the weight on this car is so low with the full weight loss package, even though the power is relatively modest, it still puts out 211 horsepower per tonne. That's pretty good. That's like small sports car or entry-level hot hatch territory. That is not bad at all. And even the PP level on this car in fully tuned form, which doesn't have bad numbers, they're not great, but they're not bad, is only 443, so you could quite easily have this car at say a 425 or even a 400 pp racing vehicle for seasonal events, online stuff, maybe even some stuff in career mode, and it definitely has the potential to be pretty good at that. So the question of course is, can it transfer its potential, what potential it has, that is on paper, into usable performance on a track and potentially win you some races 
Or is this one of those classics which is more of a collector's piece? There are definitely some cars like that. Well, around the track, the fact that it is rear-engine, rear-wheel drive, combined with its age, even when you upgrade it, it's still a very dated car, and you have to remember that. You can't go into driving something like this and expect it to handle like a car from the 1970s or the 1980s, because although they're both classics or vintage in the broad sense, they are so different. The tech between those decades changed so much, and even though it's just a game, you can kind of feel the difference. This car feels more primitive in comparison even with the upgrades. The handling is a little bit duller, it doesn't have quite as much feel, it's not as sharp even as the other classic Beetle, which in comparison feels kind of like a little race car. This car feels much more like a high-end cruiser when you fully tune it, that low and slow style of vehicle. Personally, I subscribe to that, I love that kind of driving, stuff like the Nissan Pal, I drive that a lot. This one is more so, I would say, inclined towards that kind of culture than being a race winner. It can definitely win events. As I said, 400 PP, 425, even 440 or 450 if you wanted to. But predominantly it's a car which I would recommend to people who like the Beetle anyway and who just want a really old car for the sake of just cruising in. Because it has performance, but it's just not about that. The newer Beetle isn't really about performance either, but the upgrades that you can do to it, even just the visual upgrades, make it feel very much like it's ready to go, it's ready to have fun, it's ready to go fast. This one just doesn't have that kind of image. Now through the corners, you have to set up your diff quite specifically. But once you do, it's definitely a great cornering machine. It can fly through twisty tracks such as city circuits like here at Monaco. So overall, if you fancy having more of a collector's piece than a race day special, you should check out this car. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.